Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Joe. Um, so as Joe mentioned, we're going to talk a little bit more about mission planning now um, and uh, how you can potentially plan your uh, drone missions. Uh, but before we go into talking about how to plan drone missions, um, I think it's always great to sort of start with why and sort of try and understand why we do what we do in drone operations. Um, so it's one of those foundational concepts to always sort of go back to to understand the, the why behind mission planning and, and automation. Um, and so <clears throat> I think from our perspective, the, the main reason why you want to do mission planning is because you want to collect high quality data. So a lot of times we, we see uh, drone operators looking at mission planning from an automation point of view. And I think it's, uh, it's, it's in our human nature to get fascinated with automation. Um, but really the main reason you want to use mission planning is because you want to, you want to collect high quality data. Um, and when you say you want to collect high quality data, one of the questions that automatically stems from that is how do you even define high quality data? Um, so our, from our perspective, we define it in three ways. So first of all, data that uh, is, is collected using mission planning um, needs to cover the entire asset or site. So if you're doing a roof inspection, facade inspection, or wind turbine inspection, you don't want to have blind spots in your data. So you want to make sure you've covered everything. Uh, you don't want to get back to the office and realize a part of the roof was missing or part of the facade was missing. So the first and foremost is coverage, complete coverage. Um, the second thing in how we define high quality data is whether or not the data was collected with the right overlaps, uh, the right altitudes, the right tight settings and all of these flight settings are very much dependent on what data you're trying to collect so uh, what gsd or ground sampling distance you need to have in your images um, so being able to set that uh, is very important and mission planning allows you to pre-plan your flight so that your drone follows those settings during the flight um, and third uh, last, last but not the least do you want to make sure that your images are clear and focused and they are essentially devoid of any motion blur, because even if you've got the entire asset or site covered and you've got the right altitudes and GSD, you don't want to come back uh, to the office and realize actually some of the images were not clear, they were not focused, and now you can't actually use them to process the data. So, so that's how we define high quality data, at least the first top three things in our mind when it comes to high quality data. Um, <clears throat> But moving on from the quality of data, we, we think that mission planning also plays another role, which is it allows you to understand the estimates for your flight um, and the efficiency that that you can you can expect from from a flight. So um, the, the first and foremost is essentially being able to estimate the amount of images or batteries you might need on site. So depending on your mission, uh, you might need more than one battery and uh, mission planning allows you to understand beforehand how many batteries you need to carry to the site. Um, also, the same way you need to, it allows you to understand how much space you might need on your SD card, or would you need multiple SD cards if it's a large mission? Um, <clears throat> the second estimate that it allows you to, um, to, to correctly identify is, is what flight speed is the optimal flight speed for your drone. So in the drone world, um, flying as fast as possible is not always great because if you're flying really fast, maybe your camera cannot keep up with the drone and you miss pictures during the flight. So mission planning, again, is a way for you to understand what is the right speed. Um, you also don't want to fly too slow because you don't want to be on the site all day. You want to have some efficiency in your operations. So finding that sweet spot is really important and mission planning allows you to really identify that. Um, and the third thing over here is essentially to minimize human errors uh, on site. So one of the things that mission planning allows you to do is pre-program your flight. So sort of, um, I think referring to uh, Joe's section, just like on Google Maps, you can build an understanding for what the site looks like and what the hazards might be. Um, you can use mission planning to understand what the drone needs to do in flight and pre-program that so that you don't, if the drone deviates or does something different, you, you, you know, you have a good idea what to, uh, what to do in that moment. And the last but not the least reason, overarching reason why mission planning is important, and I think this is very much where the future is and where things are going, is got to do with flight repeatability. So um, one of the things we're seeing more and more of is that um, people are conducting repeat inspections, repeat surveys uh, uh, with the same operators. And 
you can expect to do uh, a job and then redo the same site uh, or, or same asset every six months or every 12 months. And so mission planning allows you to save the mission plan so that you can repeat the flight quite easily. Um, so essentially it's enabling frequent inspections, um, but more than that, it allows you to repeat those inspections with many different types of sensors. So if you're doing a roof survey, you, you could on the same day do both a visual and uh, a thermal survey so that you can get uh, a multi-sensor view of the roof. Um, so you can understand the roof from a, from a visual contextual point of view, but you can also understand its thermal properties using a thermal sensor. And being able to do that with two different types of sensors is, again, something you can enable um, using mission planning. And last but not the least is um, sort of the 4D change analysis side of things. So where we think the future is, is that uh, we are seeing operations being conducted on the same site multiple times. And 3D data is being captured off the same site uh, multiple times. Uh, which essentially is allowing uh, site uh, inspectors to or asset inspectors to build a 4D uh, understanding of the site or the asset and understand what's changing in that asset over time. Um, so, so this essentially, from our perspective, underpins the future of predictive maintenance, where you can essentially think about building um, a condition change understanding of your asset or site over time. So. So that's sort of how you would uh, go about um, um, sort of collecting data and using mission planning to collect data for that for that purpose. Um, so now that we understand why you would um, why you would collect uh, data using mission planning, um, I'd like to sort of show you how you could um, how you could do the mission planning in Hammer missions. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen. All right, um, hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, um, all right, so brilliant. Uh, so what I've got here is basically Hammer Hub. So essentially uh, it's a web-based product where you can, where you can plan your missions. And um, you can essentially, what you see on the map is uh, basically your current location. So this is the office building where I'm doing the, uh, the webinar from. And let's say I wanted to inspect this particular roof. Um, the way you would plan this mission in Hammer is that you would um, essentially go into the, um, the tasks menu. And in Hammer, the approach we've taken to mission planning is that we've understood that you might be doing one mission one day and another mission on a different day. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to switch between different software for different tasks. You want to build consistency in your workflows. And so we integrate different tasks or different types of missions into one software platform. So with Hammer Hub, you can choose a roof inspection if that's, um, that's what you're aiming to uh, capture. And Hammer will tell you to draw a polygon over the inspection area. And in this particular example, we are planning to capture this roof. So essentially I will draw a polygon uh, over, the, over the roof. Um, and you could also, instead of drawing a polygon, you can import a KML because sometimes we see that operators receive a KML file from their clients. So you can essentially import the KML file, file directly. Once I've added the polygon, um, Hammer will generate a default flight plan for the roof, um, which you can go into these settings and configure. So this is very much about building the flight uh, efficiency and optimal metrics that I mentioned earlier. So you can see with this default flight plan, you would you would essentially fly for uh, five minutes, one battery, 40 pitches, um, but you might want to fly at a lower altitude. Um, you might want to have less overlap in your images. So you can adjust all of those properties um, in the flight settings. And once you've done that, you can then simulate your mission. So by hitting the play button, you can essentially see what the drone will do in flight um, before you get to the site. So again, this allows you to think through what your, what your mission uh, is on site or what the drone should be doing on site before you get to the site. Um, you can also see it in 3D. So you can build again, a contextual understanding for what the flight plan looks like. And um, if you wanted to, um, for instance, in this example, change the flight plan to fly a bit lower, you can um, change that and see how, uh, how many pictures it's going to take and how that would impact uh, the 3D view. Um, so essentially the mission planning is allowing you to think through your flight, uh, think through the data capture and uh, coming up with the best flight plan for the job at hand. Um, 
just want to quickly also mention that you, um, you can you can do other types of flight plans. Um, so essentially, if your mission was to do something like a facade mapping, then you can essentially add uh, a facade plan uh, and you can configure settings uh, and um, very much go to the same flow, but uh, for a more vertical uh, inspection mission, more of a facade mission. Um, and once you are happy with your flight plan or mission plan, it's all saved uh, to your your Hammer Hub accounts uh, in the cloud, and you can then essentially sync it with the app. So essentially, there is uh, a way for you to just send this mission to the app, which is then connected to the drone, <clears throat> and then executes this mission uh, on the field. So um, that's pretty much mission planning in a nutshell. Um, once you've collected the data, you can also analyze the data. So just to give you an overview for one of the flights that was conducted in um, one of the Astas in, in uh, Astas Superstores in, uh, in Brighton, you can expect to see images <clears throat> like this, which uh, are essentially uh, um, flown using a drone uh, and you can see them in the 3D view to get context for your mission and you can sift through different pictures and uh, annotate those images for uh, any defects that you might find, um, allowing you to also um, work with the data uh, that's been captured. Um, but uh, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to talk a little bit about mission, how you could plan a mission in um, Hammer Missions. Um, I'd uh, now go back to the presentation. So I'm just going to stop sharing. Um, right. Okay, thank you very much, Varun. Really interesting. Yeah, great. So, um, oh, could we have the next slide, uh, please? Oh, of course. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Joe. Um, so, yeah, so just the last sort of point that I'd like to leave you with is I think the processing and sharing of the data are also really important parts of the workflow. And it's important to sort of understand um, um, from the mission planning all the way to the data delivery, what the end goal or the end deliverable is to the customer, and whether it's a 2D map or a 3D model, uh, or if it's annotated images uh, that the customer is looking for, um, and also the delivery mechanism. So um, I think gone are the days when you would just deliver the data on a USB drive, um, I think, it, uh, or even retransfer, for instance. I think uh, we're moving into the world where project links are being sent uh, to the customers and a report, a PDF report alongside. So um, thinking through that is really important. And one of the things that I always like to say is that um, there are lots of tools in the market. There's a lot of things that, things that, that technology can do, but it's always important to identify your unique workflow and your unique requirements for the client and then find the tool that best fits that workflow as opposed to adopting a tool and then building the workflow around it, which, which is sort of like putting the cart before the horse. So I think it's always about, it's, it's just very much about the customer and the client and that's really what matters at the end of the day and delivering a great experience to them. Um, hopefully this was interesting um, and um, I'm happy to take any questions on mission planning uh, side of things now. Um, is there any at the moment? Uh, thank you.